Welcome to Mount Sinai Live. We stream smart healthcare information that's simple to understand so you can improve your health. I'm physical therapist, Dr. Jimmy McKay, and I'm your host. Today, we're talking about daylight savings time and your health. Audience, remember, if you have any questions or comments during the live stream, feel free to drop them in the comments below on whatever platform you're watching from. Now, daylight saving time, also known as daylight savings time or daylight time, is the procedure of changing the clocks during warmer months so that darkness falls at a later time. So we could be outside at 8 p.m. in a few months and it's will still be light out. But can daylight saving time have, a, have an effect on your health? To help answer that question are Dr. Mariana Figuero, a professor of population health science and policy and the director of the Light and Health Research Center at Mount Sinai, and Dr. Rajvi Vora, associate professor of psychiatry and vice chair for clinical affairs for the Department of Psychiatry here at Mount Sinai. Doctors, welcome to Mount Sinai Live. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's let's help answering this question. Let's start with you, Dr. Figueroa. As we spring forward this weekend, we lose an hour of sleep, but we gain an hour of sunshine. What are the benefits of this increased sunshine to your health and mood? Well, um, every time we have more light or daylight or longer day length, um, it's always better for for the mood and for health. Um, because we are daytime species, we're, we're sort of uh, um, wired up to be in bright days and dark nights. Um, and obviously the darkness of winter is always harder. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, later on. Um, so, so there are not just health benefits, but there are also, I think, social benefits that people do like to have the extra daylight hours after they leave work that can allow them, for example, to exercise more, to socialize more, uh, to be outdoors more and be more with people. So there are benefits that it's, uh, you have a little bit more energy to do things when you get out of work and those things can be uh, exercise, for example, which ends up being a healthy, um, a healthy thing for you in general. We just want an excuse to be able to do all the things, right? When, when winter, when you're, and we say it every year, oh my gosh, it's five o'clock and it's dark already. What's going on here? All right. So with, with any question, there's always two sides. So Dr. Figueroa, we'll stay with you. How might this change negatively impact people? Are there some, some people like older adults, younger adults that are more susceptible to a negative reaction to this clock change? Yeah, it's a, you know, it, it's still a very, um, controversial thing. Some people uh, don't like the daylight saving time. Some people prefer it. Um, one of the negative sides uh, is really um, the fact that we will lose an hour of sleep. And more importantly, we will be an hour shifted from our biological clock. So what happens is that you're forced to wake up an hour earlier than what your clock is telling you it is. Um, that is actually even worse as you go west. So in other words, compare Boston to, say, South Bend, Indiana. And South Bend, Indiana is even worse because in the beginning, you're going to see daybreak at 730 in the morning, sometimes even close, close to 8 o'clock in the morning. And that's actually not very good or not very pleasant. And we lose what that daylight or that morning light that we need to synchronize our biological clock. Now, the people that suffer most are in general, say, adolescents, because they have a hard time falling asleep earlier. And with the time change, that's going to get worse because they are forced to go to bed an hour earlier, but their biological clock is not telling them to go to sleep. So they may increase that sleep onset latency a little bit more. So um, there, there's a lot of controversy about the daylight savings. I mean, there's the benefit of us having more sunshine in the evening, but there's also that difficulty, especially in the beginning. There's also some um, conversation about um, more traffic accidents or increase in stroke or cardiovascular disease in this first day of transition. And it has to do with obviously you're driving to work in the dark, which has a positive side because now you're driving back from work with the light. So that sort of weighs, you know, one against the other. 
But then there has been some uh, reports that there are more mental health issues, there are some uh, more uh, traffic accidents or even cardiovascular disease and um, uh, incidence of stroke. So the jury is still out as where's the pros and the cons uh, and everybody has their own preferences. All right. Well, while the jury is still out there, let's figure out some tips of what people can do about it. Let's bring in Dr. Vora here. Dr. Vora, any tips for how to adjust for this seasonal change? What can we do about this? So, you know, like Dr. Figueroa said, I think the biggest change we're going to feel is that we're not going to have one extra hour of sleep. So, yes, the sunshine is going to be great. Getting home when it's still light is going to be great. But waking up in the mornings is going to be very, very difficult. And I think one of the biggest things that people say is that you want to try and stick to your sleep schedule um, to ease in. Uh, it's it's advice that you want to maybe start moving your bedtime 15 minutes earlier every day, the week off. I mean, we're already in the week, so technically Sunday morning, if you've all taken a little time over the weekend and try to go to bed a little bit earlier, then you're catching up on that, you know, allowing your body's rhythm to sort of get settled into this extra hour that you're going to be sort of missing out of your sleep. So that's, that's a good tip um, that I generally tell people to start doing. Um, light, very important again, because we will be having more sunshine, but I think the more time you spend in sunshine, the melatonin production in your body sort of responds to that and makes you get tired at the right time. So, and then thirdly, limiting caffeine. That's another issue, right? Because when you're tired in the daytime, you will want to have an extra cup of joe, maybe to, as it's like light outside, you might say, hey, let me just get a little coffee before I get home. But that probably is also not going to help you. So limiting your caffeine intake, you know, afternoon or so, cutting it down would help. So really setting yourself up for success. A couple of great tips there. Uh, Dr. Figueroa, anything you wanted to add in terms of tactical things people can do to set themselves up to adjust for the seasonal change? Yeah, sure. I mean, those are great tips. I mean, all I would add is as soon as you get up, go outside and get light uh, because that morning light will help you advance your clock, which is what you're trying to do. You're trying to advance the clock to account for that one hour phase change. And as, as, as tempting as it is in the first week, minimize the amount of evening daylight that you're going to get. I know we're all craving for that sunshine, but we're going to have it the whole summer. So wait a little bit because that evening light goes against what you want to accomplish. So minimize that evening light in the beginning, maximize the morning light and follow all the other tips that you, you heard before. I have never heard about that, but it makes sense given what you're both telling us here. Um, next question, uh, Dr. Vora, while seasonal affective disorder is often, often associated with the fall, can it work against us? Can it affect people in the spring? If so, talk to us about that. What causes and, and other things we can do about that? So yes, you know, seasonal affective disorder is a common disorder that people know about, but mostly we associate it with the winter and the fall months because it's, you know, associated with having less light. But there is a summer pattern, seasonal affective disorder or summer depression, and it's not very common, but people do get it. And there are very specific symptoms in addition to the symptoms of, you know, depression uh, that most people feel. But for the summer pattern, you might have trouble sleeping, the opposite, insomnia, again, going by the light that we're just talking about poor appetite because you just generally seem to have more energy. There's a little more restlessness, agitation, some anxiety. Um, all of these are sort of noted in the summer uh, pattern of the seasonal affective disorder. Um, unfortunately, we don't really understand for sure exactly what causes this, but research really says that people with seasonal affective disorder tend to have reduced activity of serotonin, and you know, which is one of the biggest chemical that's helping our brain regulate the mood. Um, and because sunlight controls the regulation of serotonin, melatonin, people with SAD, th this regulation is not well controlled and that leads to sort of decreased levels, which leads to more depression. Um, also vitamin D is known to be a, a big, you know, sort of factor in causing um, these issues because it can actually affect serotonin activity. So again, sunlight, light, and all, the tying up of all of these neurochemical interactions is people believe this is what causes seasonal affective disorder. Um, so in terms of what you can do, I guess, to help yourself with this um, is that I, I think just really like we're talking about making sure your sleep schedule remains the same, your nighttime sleep is sort of in good you know, routine, um, don't nap in the middle of the day. Um, and again, I think with like most people with depression, we really encourage exercise. Um, but in light of what we're just hearing about the light, the effects of morning light and evening light for the summer pattern, you might want to 
try to work out more in the morning, exercise in the morning, get out in the morning, as opposed to doing it at night. Excellent. Great insight. Some things I'd never thought about. Doctors, thanks so much for the information on this. It's coming up this weekend. Watch your cell phone because they automatically change. You won't even know it hit you. Uh, find us at Mount Sinai NYC on all major social platforms. This has been another Mount Sinai Live broadcast. We stream smart healthcare information that's simple to understand so you can improve your health. I'm physical therapist Dr. Jimmy McKay. Thanks for watching.